know, I, I hear this a lot about politics. You know, my son didn't get to play. My daughter didn't get to play. There was a lot of politics, and, and I've never been a believer in that at all. And I think what happens a lot of times is um, as an athlete, and really in anything that you do, even if it's not athletics, you have to take the decision out of everybody else's hands whether or not you're going to play, whether or not you're going to get the job, whether or not you're going to get the assignment. And I think you have to be so good that there is no decision. And I can remember a time coaching at NC State, and I had a wonderful, wonderful player, and he was a terrific shooter. And he started the year and struggled, could not make a basket, just went through a slump. And I think at one time he was about three for 35 from the three-point line, and I took him out of the starting lineup and I replaced him. And I got a phone call one day from his mother, and she was concerned that her son wasn't in the starting lineup again or at that time. And I remember telling her, I said, listen, here's the answer to the question. If you tell your son to play better, he'll play more. And she said, I know, coach, I know, but, but, and she went on again. And I said, hold on, let, let's stop. I'm going to go back. If he plays better, he'll play more. And it's really simple. Coaches want to win. People that are sales managers want to win. And what we have to do is perform. And you have to be good enough to fight through and keep swinging, keep trying, and fight through. And I know sometimes that sounds like a simple thing, but I think so many times people are wanting and looking for the easiest route there is. They want it to be handed to them, especially sometimes I think with young people today. You know, there's a term that says, you know, we, we hunt for the path of least resistance. It's the easiest route. And sometimes that's not the best route. And I remember as a young person, I wanted to play college basketball. That was my dream growing up. I wanted to play. It was up to me. There was nobody else. I can't blame the coach. I can't blame somebody else. It's up to me every day. And I've got to make a decision every single day if I'm going to work towards whatever it is my goal is. And for me, it was to play college basketball and to play at the highest level. And I was able to achieve that. I started 98 straight games at the University of Alabama in the SEC, played in three straight Sweet 16s, SEC championships was a starting guard on really, really good, talented basketball teams, played for a terrific coach. But none of that just happened. It happened because of how hard I worked. And I think sometimes you got to fall in love with the grind. you got to fall in love with how hard it is to achieve. That, that's part of the journey. And I think so many times people hunt for the easiest path, the easiest route, the path of least resistance. And truly, what we all should do is we should love the journey. We should love the competition against yourself. Because you wake up every day, you want to be good, you want to do something amazing, you want to accomplish something. But so many times, people quit. And they just quit. They quit in life. Quitting is a hard word. It's a hard word to take. It's a hard word to talk about. And somebody says you quit. It's probably one of the biggest, toughest, knife-cutting insults we have but it happens every day. And there's the old saying, you know, when the, the going gets tough, the tough get going. And there's those, some of those slogans are a little corny, but they're true. And I remember growing up for me, it was a competition against myself every day, every day. What am I going to do today? That's going to make me closer and bring me closer to whatever those goals might be. And that's the, that's the joy of it is, is when you compete against yourself every day. And you know, at the end of the day, I won. I won against myself. I won against the path of least resistance. Every day we make choices. Every single day we choose where we're going to spend our time. I can spend it sitting on the couch watching college football. I can spend it on my phone, scrolling through Instagram and Facebook and all the social media outlets. And I can spend hours doing that. But we have choices every day. And I used to tell everybody, when you say yes to one thing, you are automatically saying no to another. And we do it every day. Sometimes you don't even know that you're doing it. But when you say yes to something, if I say yes to whatever it is, I've automatically said no to something else in that time period. 
And so for me, what I want to say yes to, I want to say yes to the things that are going to push me closer to all the places I want to go and all the things I want to accomplish. And I've got to do it every day. And some days it's easier than others. Some days it's hard. But I think that's the joy of the journey. And some people don't like that. They don't like the grind. Sometimes I've always felt like it's, it's innate. Sometimes it's taught. But as a coach, what we liked as coaches, we loved those guys that loved to compete. Competition was everything for them. The bigger the game, the better they are. The tougher the moment, the tougher they are. That's what we as coaches like. That's what we want. When it gets right down to it, and you've got to take it to another level, somehow, some way, I've got to find the strength. I've got to find the will. And coaches love the great ones. The great ones that aren't afraid of the moment. They're not afraid to take the shot. They're not afraid to take a chance. And they're at their best when their best is needed. Some people can't do it. Some players can't do it. Some athletes can't do it. And then all of a sudden we see these other ones. In the moment where they need to be great, somehow they are. They just didn't wake up that way. That was a learned habit. It was a learned thing about their life. They learned it. They pushed hard. They fought through at some point in time. They didn't quit the workout. They finished the workout. They came back tomorrow. They came back later today. They found a way. They found a way to be excellent. And in those moments when they had to rise up and they had to be phenomenal and they had to be at their best, when everything counts, when everything's on the line, they were able to perform. And the reason is they practiced it over and over and over again every day in everyday life. When a lot of times when you're by yourself. And when I was young, I could remember getting up and going to the gym early in the morning before school, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock. And I'm going to get 500 jumpers up. I'm going to work my butt off in the morning. A lot of people were sleeping. They said yes to sleep. They said no to working out. So every day when I say yes to one thing, I automatically say no to something else. Every day we build habits. We build habits in everything that we do. Our bodies will eventually run like a well-oiled machine, like a computer. I would like to suggest that if you take a minute and think about how you brush your teeth, you brush your teeth the same way every day. I'm 59 years old. I brush my teeth the same way every day. Right side, left side, however it may be. I I do it the same way. It's a habit that was formed. I used to tell my teams, I put my left pant leg in when I put my pants on every day, first, every day. If I put my right pant leg in, it'd be uncomfortable. It doesn't feel good to me because I formed a habit. And so we as people, we form habits every day. And what I would encourage young people all the time, players that played for me, my own children, is to build the right habits. What kind of habits are you building today? Are they lazy? Do you do a job halfway? If somebody asks you to do something, are you doing it to the best of your ability? Do you make your bed the best possible way you could make it in the morning? Or do you just kind of make it kind of partly? Because I think as people, we build, for, we build habits every day. We form habits And sometimes we're forming bad habits. And the bad habits are going to bite us and they're going to ruin us if we don't figure out how to form good habits every single day. We have choices every day in how we want to live. We have choices whether or not we want to be happy. We have choices whether or not we're going to stay on our phones all day long. I see young people walking down the street, heads down, eyes buried into their phone. They don't even know what's going on around them. And the choice is, is that a good habit to build? That your phone owns you. It owns your mind. It owns how you think. It owns your time. Do you have enough discipline in your life to put your phone down? Do you have enough discipline to get out of bed earlier? Get out of bed 30 minutes earlier every day. Read every day. Read a great book. Read the Bible. Read something that inspires you. 
Find a way to be inspired every single day so that you can do something magnificent every single day. The power of being positive, the power of being upbeat, the power of being contagious with your attitude that other people want to be around you. I used to tell my players when I coached, if I asked you, how are you doing? You got five answers. Good, great, terrific, fantastic, sensational. So if I see them across campus and I say, hey, how you doing over there? Coach, I'm fantastic. Coach, I'm sensational today. You know what that does to the room? You know what it does to people's, uh, their, their attitudes? As opposed to, how you doing today? Ah, uh, not very good. I'm just not very good. I don't know, Coach. I don't know. Do you lift people up? Or do you bring people down? Five answers every day. How are you doing? I'm good, great, terrific, fantastic, sensational, Coach. That's how I'm every day. So my encouragement for young people all the time is make a choice. Make a choice whether or not you're going to be happy today. Upbeat. Set goals for yourself. Find ways to achieve them. What are you doing today? One step, not a hundred steps, just one. One step. What are you going to do today that will push you closer to the goals, the dreams, the things that you want to do in your life? How are you going to get there? Nobody's going to get there for you. It's up to you every day. It's up to you to find in yourself, deep in your gut, deep in your soul, the love of competition. And the real competition is competition against yourself every day. You need a personal victory every day. The going got tough. I fought through. I got it done. I was asked to do a chore. I was asked to do a job. I did that chore. I did that job to the best of my ability. When I make my bed, it's going to be the best looking bed there is in, in the whole town. No one will make a bed better than me. If I do the dishes, I'm going to do the dishes to the best of my ability. And it all starts with building the right habits every day in everything. Because if we can't do the little things well, there's no chance we'll do the, the big things well. You know, a, another thing sometimes that, uh, it, that I see happening a lot, and, and I was a coach, and, and, uh, be, and I, I would get calls from parents sometimes when their children wasn't, they weren't playing. They were on the bench, and it happens all the time. And if you take a basketball team with 12 or 13 players, and there's only five guys on the court at one time, or a football team, or a volleyball team, or whatever it may be, and sometimes those kids will come home and they're complaining and they're complaining about the coach and they're complaining about why they didn't get to play. You know, my answer sometimes to parents is, number one, you know, don't always side with your child. Sometimes they need to hear the truth. The truth is you have to get better. You have to get better so the coach has no decision to make. All things being equal, he may play somebody else other than you and you may sit on the bench so I think for a parent sometimes in and especially kind of this era that we're in right now and this kind of always you know the helicopter parent I'm helicoptering over my child I'm always want to make sure everything's good for my child sometimes kids just need the truth that's all you haven't worked very hard you haven't worked as hard as you need to work and you got to work harder you got to separate yourself in practice you got to put the coach in a position where, coach, I've got, I've got no choice but to play this person. They're that good. So I think sometimes as parents, please don't fall into that trap where you're always just siding with your child. The coach is always wrong. Everybody, it's everybody else's fault. You got to take ownership. You got to look yourself in the mirror and you got to get better. It's real simple. You know, if you're a young person right now and, and you're playing sports, or kind of this may translate to a lot of different walks of life, but specifically in sports and you're not playing right now. And I think sometimes it's frustrating, it's hard, you want to play. And I, I think there's so many things you can do as an athlete to win favor. First of all, you've got to get yourself good enough to play. Separate yourself from everybody else. Find a way to improve your skills. Work on your skills. 
Do you as an athlete understand what the coaches want? Have you really studied what they're trying to do? Smart players, tough players, tough-minded players usually find a way to get on the court. It's the players that complain, their attitude, the body language. I walk into practice every day. My, I'm slumping over. I pout. I'm sniveling. As opposed to being upbeat, positive, energetic, excited, I'm ready. I have enthusiasm, coach. I've learned what it is that you want me to do. I've studied it. I've learned it. I'm a great teammate. You know, so many times I, I coach players, and, and the, the players that I love to coach are the players that could genuinely, genuinely get excited for somebody else's success. So many times you coach players, and they're only happy when they play well. They're only happy when they perform well. But are you genuinely happy for somebody else? Because every night, especially in basketball, football, baseball, volleyball, it doesn't matter. It's not always your night. Sometimes it's the other person's night. Sometimes it's the other player that played well, that made the big shot, made the big foul shot late in the game. Can you get excited for them? Are you excited to see somebody else succeed? And I used to tell our players all the time, it's almost like we live in a bubble. Players, you're in just a bubble by yourself. And you got to get outside of the bubble. You got to get outside of your own bubble and worry and think and care about everybody else on the team. So if you're not playing, and if you're a young person right now who's listening that's not playing, and you're on the team, you're frustrated, you're going home every night, ask yourself, how's your attitude? How's your body language? How, when you walk into the gym every day, do you lift people up? Or are you the kind of person that kind of drags the room down? How hard are you really working? Are you putting in extra effort? Are you there early? Are you the first one there and the last one to leave? I guarantee your coach is going to respond when he sees the first guy that walks through the gym every day, and that's the same guy that's the last guy to leave every day. That's the kind of players that coaches want to coach.